this is going to be very informal. And so when you have something to say, just jump in and say it, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't bother to raise your hand politely. Just jump right in. So uh, no further ado, let us begin. Um, those of you that have been there know how mountainous Guatemala is. And they didn't have the wheel until after the Spanish came because it was relatively useless. There was nothing <laughs> flat enough to drive a cart on <laughs> un until uh, roads were made. Uh, it's an extraordinary country. Uh, the villages are spread far and wide and uh, until recently most of them and even still some of them only connected by footpaths and so it gave an opportunity for uh, designs and cultural variations there's three or four major groups of people and there and about 20 languages as i understand 21 to 20 yeah 20, 21 uh, right. languages in the country uh, not all of them uh, mutually understandable to one another so things developed individually there and um women i hope still it's been a while since i've been back dress in native costume and as is the case in a, a lot of ethnic situations the men tend to go for the blue jeans mm -hmm. and the um, uh, european style shirts although the men in santiago atitlan as far as i know are still wearing their wonderfully embroidered hand-woven pants so, and a couple of other places too. Oh, let's go there while we're at it. Let's see, there's some men's pants from, um, oh yeah, all right. <laughs> you got it, Danny? And just pass them around. These are men's pants from Todos Santos, Chuchiman. It, the, Todos Santos is up in the north, closer to Huehuetenango. And, uh, the men up there wear these and they're pretty typical and they are backstrap woven on looms like this this is um, a miniature version but i like it because it's got all its parts it's got its um stick at the top stick at the bottom also known as the stick loom <laughs> <laughs> It's got a, a shed bar, this one, and it's got a heddle bar, this one. And then it's got a couple of extra sticks. This one, which I have sticking on the back right now, is for making the pickup designs uh, in these places. Again, I say the word. Um, be, uh, there's a woman named Irene Emery <coughs> who wrote a book trying to um, get all the anthropologists to use the same language about these things so we would know what they were talking about. So the official word is discontinuous supplementary weft, <laughs> making the little designy things. It means it doesn't go all the way across the weave. It's if I picked it out, I'd still have cloth left behind and it floats to make the designs on the front so this loom is attached to something sturdy like the the heddle stick is sliding lolly yeah oh it certainly is and it's losing its pedals <laughs> oh it's now even a better uh example <laughs> what happens when you let go of your uh <laughs> Uh, could somebody just take this and put it uh, back there on top of the solo law wheat fields? <laughs> and I have a pictures from uh, Toto Santos of a health clinic that was held on Saturdays. So. Men in their proper pants? Or it's well, I don't, you know, the guys are dressed in regular pants uh -huh. and uh, the women, but the women are mm -hmm. so beautiful. And it also includes the clinic I worked at after the earthquake in uh, Homalapa. And oh, he'll I'll be, be talking uh, about that. Nicely dressed. Oh, beautifully. <laughs> and uh, anyway, and all passed that around. Yeah, 1976. So, so about that discontinuous left, 
in some places, it's entirely on the front of the cloth. This is a little napkin uh, made by Albertina's mom. And you can see on the back, you know, lots of color on the front. On the back, you only see where things start and stop. Mm. So let's pass that around. And in some cases, like this one is an old one from Quetzal. If you have lots of each each one of these little colors is one brocade area. It's not tapestry. I'm going to show you some tapestry later. But if you've got a lot of them, you just let them hang out on the back. And see warm up. Yeah, there's a lot to be said. Um, embroidery is usually only used for neck and occasionally um, sleeve deals. And this one is a hand done one. Although um, when I was there in the 90s and during the violence, what's called the violence, um, it was dangerous to be able to be spotted for where you, what village you were from. And so um, generic wheatfields started appearing. Wonderful satins, lots of machine embroidery. I was in Santiago Atitlan and I, I saw all these women gathered around this really tall box, big box. And it was full of these satin wheatfields. And so, you know, as people go to school more and more and um, migrate to the cities and to the United States and so forth, a lot of the um, hand weaving culture is being lost. There is one village, Sonia, this is your cue. There is one village that strictly embroiders. And well, we have a version in our collection. This is as close as I could get, Sonia. <laughs> and it's just a piece, and somebody has over dyed it. It's supposed to be these wonderful, strong colors. But now I'll say it again because some of you weren't in the house earlier. Our collection at Pacific Textile Arts is not a white glove collection. It's meant to be handled and poked at, and in a, a few cases, taken apart to see how things were made. So I'm hoping Sonia feels the same way because her oh, wheat peel is going around. It's satin stitch, and look on the inside, on all of these things I'm sending around. Look on both sides because there's more information inside as look well. Inside of that, that's, that's yeah. Amazing. yeah. Do you guys need to add anything at this point? <laughs> You'll just leap in when you want. We're just going to go higgledy piggledy now. Um, you know, it's in front of me. I'll talk about it. <laughs> this is a an old wheel from Santa Catarina Polipo. A lot of you know Albertina, our friend who used to come frequently, who got turned back at the San Francisco airport in 2017 oh, no. because they looked her up online and found that she had been teaching here and other places and she was coming on a tourist visa and that's not allowed. So no this, uh, yeah, we're, uh, apparently there's a move afoot, Adrian was telling me, there's a move afoot uh, by her friend um, Melissa. Melissa up in Laytonville to uh, get Jared Huffman to try to intervene to get her back on yeah. a tourist visa or on a teacher. Yes. She, was, she had her daughter with her daughter with her pregnant. Yes. Uh, Plus, yeah. she had a bundle of stuff that she had already <laughs> priced. Usually, she waited until uh, she got uh, here to uh, <laughs> price things. So, you know, three strikes. Yeah. Plus, she's a traditional woman wearing traditional clothes, so they you can push them around more than you can other people. And there's a photo of Albertina. Yeah. Um, and, the, and the an old woman who I spun with. Pass uh, that around to Hilde, would you? <laughs> Kindergarten. In her village. Um, 
Jesus, yeah. sounds like Kathleen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and that's on the list. Yeah, yeah. 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 many backstrap loom classes for us. So this is the old style of weed heel. And then they, you know, I was making the point in the gallery about fashion that the things are not static, even within a, a <clears throat> village cultural context. Somebody, some weaver always does something a little different. And then everybody else gets inspired and more different things happen. So around the lake, it's almost all these um, red and white stripes. This weave peel is done in three pieces. The center is one weaving, same mine is also from Santa Catarina Polipo. One big panel down the front and then full, wrapped around panels for the sides. So two different times of setting up the loom and weaving. And uh, so this is what was happening in the late 90s, early 2000s. And I think part of this was motivated by fashion and part of it was motivated by ability to sell it yeah. because um, fishing has gotten difficult on the lake. I heard a rumor that uh, there were uh, there was a development uh, pro project that introduced largemouth bass oh. to the lake. Mm. And um, these guys don't swim. The men are mostly the fishermen. And they, they were accustomed to catching little fish closer to shore. And the bass were wiping out all the baby fish. So there was more pressure on the women to uh, make things that would sell. And they are very handy by Panaha Shell, which is a tourist town. Yeah. So, you know, make something that can sell. Most of the uh, wheat peels <clears throat> are one-sided with the exception of San Antonio Aguas Calientes, where it's backstrap woven and it's brocaded on both sides. Wow. Yeah. This is a baby boy hat. This is one from Sampongo, but you can see uh, between the two of them, you can see what a hat would look like if it was made up. Babies wear hats at least the first three months. It's partly to protect the development of the opening in the top of their heads. And it's also mm -hmm. partly to uh, discourage the evil eye. You know, babies are so susceptible. Uh, their first year it's, uh, it, in, um, in Indonesia, they don't even bother to name the kids for the first year because you want to make sure they actually make it. And this is also from... Uh, San Antonio Aguas Calientes. And this is a woman's servietta or tsute. This would be used. It's not big enough to carry the baby unless the baby's really, really tiny. It's more for covering your uh, groceries or carrying your money. It's like a purse. And in a pinch, you can fold it up and put it on your head to uh, shelter yourself from the sun. Well, you do a better job than that. <laughs> and uh, oh, thanks for that, Mari. The little boy's hat piece that's going around has a piece of paper. Elaine, would you kind of show the piece of paper that um, you buy at the uh, local store? And it's needlework designs. Huh. So it's European designs. You know, again, they're quite close to Antigua. Antigua is a big town for tourists. And so, <coughs> you know, those kind of designs are more likely to sell to the tourists. The real um, indigenous design for San Antonio Aguas Calientes is this lightning sort of form here. But uh, this is a tourist piece. This was made to sell, but it does have the two-sided section mm -hmm. with the Quetzal birds. The Quetzal uh, birds are indigenous to Guatemala. Mm -hmm. Cotton, we're talking about cotton for most of these things. Let's see, there's another um, Aguas Calientes down there on the end. Yes, you got it, Dee. 
um, I want I put this one out in particular. It's a good thing that Adrian put most of the collection in the gallery so that there were fewer things for me to talk about. <laughs> Somebody did sacrilege on this poor thing. It was a wee peel and they cut it to have armholes. Don't do that to your wee peel. <laughs> the other thing that happens a lot. So this is another San Antonio Sagos Calientes. I highly recommend looking inside. Oh, look, no design at all showing there. Look at these things. They're 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 a study collection. Um, there is has always been. Uh, I'm going to say this for Eleanor because uh, she and I feel the same way about it. There it, it has always been a bunch of middlemen going around buying wee peels basically right off of the back yeah. of especially poor women and then chopping them up to make other things that are more likely to sell yeah. so that the middleman makes all the money and the wee peels go out of mm -hmm. personal use. Women make wee peels for themselves and their families on backstrap looms. It's a labor of love. And uh, we we wish they didn't end up like that poor thing. Yes. Although we still get to admire the beautiful job of weaving. Mm -hmm. Wally, yes. can we go back to Santa Catarina? Yes, oh, please. A moment. Oh, there's a good one. Wow. So this was woven by Albertina's mom. Friends. Wow. Friends. Wow. So it's the transition between the red and the what Wally and... <laughs> yeah. Elaine and people are wearing. It's between yeah. that old one that's all red. Can you hold yeah. it up? And Sonia, would you hold it up? Can uh, we pass it around? Sure. Uh, can you pass it to Wally first so she can show the people who watch on this? Wow. Do we have anybody watching on the Zoom? Well, we will. It's going to be yeah. online. Oh, OK. <laughs> You're recorded for us. That Albertina came, she had changed it again. Yeah. yeah. And the and the skirts yeah. were went through a lot of changes. Yeah. Oh, so let's we, talk about skirts. Karen and you could just get up and uh, be there. Okay. Well, the oh. Yeah. Could I ask how much of those changes are related to the rise in tourism and like meeting market demands of yeah. people coming from other countries? One of the books that I was re reading recently, actually it was um, Kathy Rousseau's book about the uh, Mage. She's got a whole book on Mage and she was an artist in residence at the Art Center for a while. So I got to know her pretty well. Thank you. And hold up one of the cargos, would you? Uh, Redes, they're called it. Redes. Yeah, and especially the one behind your husband is a really big one. These are made out of mage, hand spun. Uh, it's a looping technique. It's one of the oldest techniques known to human mm -hmm. beings constructing uh, textiles. Wow. And it's for carry, they usually come in pairs, and it's for carrying loads. You would put a basket inside there. And the size of the loops is relative to what you're going to carry around. So this is an open loop. So undoubtedly, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to hold it up for the folks at home. <laughs> there we go. And totally stretchy. Look at this thing. It, it'll adjust to just about any size. This is a linking. Anyway, if you want to know about these processes, Kathy's book is a great recommendation. So, Where were we? Oh, skirts. Skirts. I, uh, <laughs> the skirts are also unique to the different villages, but darned if I know which ones to go to wear. The only one I know about is the Chichi that I bought myself when I was in Chichi. Do you know where this so, skirt is? Well, from? I, I, the Ishil area mm -hmm. um, definitely had. Oh. So Neva, uh, and um, they would Kocho, buy um, the red <laughs> cotton called Crea from Manchester, England, because it was durable and it didn't fade. And um, this this is an ecot. Um, and so the, the colors in the ecot stripes oh, yeah. would be uh, different depending that, yeah, on the villages. Be. And the other one. Um, 
and yellow, blue, and white seem to be the predominant colors. And I don't know how to identify which went, went to which villages, but. Uh. And the red, excuse me, the red, the red skirts most likely are from a town called Neba in yes. the Quiche, in the Quiche yes. area. Who are we talking to? Who's that? You're talking to Ellen in Albany, California. Oh, oh Ellen. Ellen. Right. Oh, well, oh, I'm right. impressed. I didn't know we were going global here. <laughs> I'm a guest of, of Sue's. <laughs> I, I believe I bought this skirt in Neba in 78. Um, yeah. And, and worn with the belt and the nice pom-poms. Which is also from the Neba Aguacatan area, um, we think. And do you um, have your head wrap, the Neba head wrap. Two. I do. I have the Neba. This is Two. the Neba head wrap. Um, they wear they, they do even wider ones than these in their hair and braid, you know, braid them in and pile Usually them up. with a folded end here that's in this a triangle is, with the pom pom thing. This is huge, and they say up to thirty four centimeters wide, which would be out wow. here. Um, so. Yes, mm -hmm. a pattern. Let's get. It's more of a belt to me than a head wrap. But yeah, they, okay. okay. You're wearing the head wrap. This is the belt. Okay, so who has the head wrap? <laughs> You're wearing it. I am. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's oh. the head wrap. <laughs> okay. I saw a picture in the book with this as the belt. That so maybe some of the anyway, belts. That it's a. <laughs> so about the ecot she was talking about ecot is a ecot the name is an um indonesian name in uh, guatemala it's hospe it's largely done in a village called salkaha and then it's sold in all the other villages and um it is tied and dyed before it's woven in chains appropriate for whatever it is that you're gonna do, skirts or weight fields or, or whatever. So this one here has one little spot where I've untied it that you can check out. And this is a whole chain that I bought in, uh, I think I bought it in the Solo Law Market. And sometimes, yes, sometimes they're just black and white. Sometimes they're indigoed first and then tied and dyed. That's what that one's, and then, Sometimes color is applied directly in certain areas. Huh. So uh -huh. there's tying and untying and retying and dobbing, dobbing on of color. <laughs> <laughs> That's an official word. No. No, that's the um, with tip off to go to the natural brown cotton. Okay. So you, uh, originally everything was hand spun, but uh, very early on it became possible to buy cotton. And um, oh, this is double perfect timing. So now cotton's available. Albertina was so excited. When I gave her a whole lot of pearl cotton that some of you beginning weaving people are experiencing because it's hard to get there. And she wove this we feel for me using all this wonderful uh, pearl cotton that I gave her. But back to the spinning issue, there is a substance that's a natural brown cotton called um, oh. Ishkaco in Mexico and I don't and probably in Guatemala too. And Coyuste is another name for it. It is a little bitty tiny um, fiber pulled off of the seeds of cotton plants, indigenous to the um, Central and 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 even South America. And it has to be spun by hand. And this bottom of this wipio from Comalapa. How do I know it's from Comalapa? It's got this very distinct red shoulder. There's another one up there, okay. red shoulders. When you see the red shoulders, you're pretty safe to say it's Comalapa. So all of this brown in here is hand spun natural brown cotton. Also hand spun natural brown cotton in this one. And possibly in this one, you're going to show how to do that. Yeah. I'm 
Yeah. Hold, hold it up. There's a spindle and natural brown cotton on it. Do you want to see that on the thing? <laughs> talk about how it's spun. About how it's spun. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, I have two pictures up there of a woman from Santa Catarina Polo Po, oh, where yeah. Albertine is from. And, you know, she, she just sits and kneels and in the cup uh, and contains it and pulls up. It's very short staple, so it's, it's hard very to, short. to weave. Very short and, staple. And it's a hell of a lot of work to get the cotton off the seed. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm. I have a, a thing about the bowl. Um, for many years, there wasn't communication between the archaeologists and the people who actually made the stuff. Uh -huh. And the archaeologists would find those bowls. They found them all through Central America down into the Andes. And they didn't know what they were for. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that bowl actually came from Baja. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. um, but Molly brought but... me one from Mexico. Gourds. Usually oh, gourds. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Gourds. Sometimes heavily decorated, painted mm -hmm. or or uh, etched into. I think that this is natural brown cotton on the bottom of this we peel from Chichicastenango. Oh, so uh, we have been presented with another segue. Um, ha have a look on the inside. There's a one little thread hanging. You know, study collection. The we peels from uh, Chichicastenango are unique. They are frequently these wonderful floral deals. Uh, there's another one there by you, Stu. This is an older style one. Is this the one I got at the thrift store? In, uh, okay. There's one of them. Um, actually, I think it's back behind on the table there that I got at a thrift store in San Francisco. And I was surprised um, by the white, but uh, in the older pictures, that does show, and I'll make the point again about the fact on the backstrap loom that looms over there now, you can actually weave right up into the warp loops. And mm -hmm. as you're weaving, so usually what happens is what's going on in this little comalapa one here, where you weave a little starter on one end, see the little mm -hmm. weaving up at the what is now the top. That's you can weave in both directions on these backstrap ones, so they weave a little bit turn the thing upside down, start again, down in the loops at the bottom that are lashed onto the stick at the bottom, weave your way up. And when you get too close to the top, you start losing the ability to make the threads go apart into sheds. And so you have to start weaving with a needle mm. and you get this heavier texture and you'll see it in a lot of the um, Chichicastinango mm -hmm. ones. I want to talk about that one some more, so don't let it go too far away. <laughs> um, it's also, you can see it in this one. And again, it's the three, three panels, the middle, the sides. And in this case, the sides are separate. They don't wrap around. So that's a, a lot of weaving. In Chi Chi, there is this unique weave that is like a velvet. It's a loop that sticks up. Be sure you get a, a good feel of this wonderful acrylic here. <laughs> and frequently um, wool and now more and more cotton. And the thing, another thing I wanted to say about the Chi Chi's is that they have this sunburst. Can you see it at, around the top of the neck? So you're wearing the universe, the cosmos, when you wear one of these. You are, you are the center of it. And these epaulets on the side here are moon symbols. Mm -hmm. So your head's going through the middle of the sun, and you've got the little epaulets on the side for the moon. That can go around now. Speak up, Annie, if you have something to say. <laughs> honey. Or I'll <laughs> just... I'll just Isn't bowl right through. One? That one has like a flat head, like a cut in the front. Is that ever traditional, the one that you just passed, Danny? Somebody's head got big. Mm -hmm. Well, sure most of them are. Possibly they. Um, tiny heads. <laughs> possibly the tourists that bought it. I mean, <laughs> we have such a hard time getting through them. This one does not get broken, but look at the beautiful sunburst on this one. And this is all cotton, but it's still in that raised surface thing, and it's got really nice moons on it. 
<laughs> are there um, people here that teach the back to back? Albertina, when we can get her here. Oh, she's in Guatemala. So. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Should get up last time. I know Nancy did too. Nancy studied in Santa Catarina Palapo. Your backstrap weaving. Yeah, I did that little brown and green backstrap. This is San. I was trying to learn Spanish, See, right? Would you point? So on I the map. Oh. just on the map. On, oh, on the just side of the side. Okay. We we oh, know. So do you teach? teach it? Do you teach it? Do you teach it at all? That was Albertina. Yeah. This was a long time ago. Right. I didn't know if there was anybody that would teach it. Well, yeah. we're yeah. going to try to get her back here to do it. We took we had classes here and we had Very classes nice. at the okay. art okay. center. And Albertina is sure. trying to get back over to teach a okay. class. So that will happen. We're, there's a determination going. So I had just come <laughs> down on a break from um, working in a clinic up in the Highlands. And um, Figured I wanted to work on my Spanish, so I walked, took a walk over there and found this family and said, would you teach me how to do what you're doing? Mostly, I just wanted to talk, mm -hmm. but I ended up making that That's pretty making good. that yeah. piece. And, uh, I wanted to learn my notes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I just wanted to say that Ellen from Albany, that, uh -huh. that just she's a friend in. of yours? Yes, long, long friend. Oh, God. Oh, you go. And she went into the Peace Corps uh, after her kids were through school, a 4 oh, uh -huh. and goes back frequently, has Peace Corps friends that live in Guatemala now, uh -huh. and she also goes and uh, interprets for doctors. Uh, uh -huh. in, right. <laughs> uh -huh. um, in the hospitals and wherever. Great. Right. Yeah. Here's another Chi-Chi item. This one is a man's headscarf, and uh, it's especially worn for um, cofredia activities. The cofredias are, uh, I've said all this in, in the gallery, but I'll say it again, of course, those of you that were not there. Uh, the cofredias are, um, or are families who care for the saint in the Catholic Church for a one year span. They have all the responsibilities of making sure the saint is well dressed and paraded on the appropriate saint's birthday. Mm -hmm. And the patron saint of the village. Yeah, usually the patron saint of the village. And the men in um, Chichicastenango have a whole deal where they wear these wonderful woolen pants and woolen jackets. And they fold these things onto their heads and they go around town collecting money for the Saints Day celebration. How do they fold them on their heads? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> <Anybody> know? Uh -huh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Carefully. <Yeah. laughs> is, it, is it a small thing or is it the triangles, the the um tassels hang down on the sides? Oh, okay. Yeah. Very swell. Oh. What I meant to tell you from Ellen that I learned this morning was that there are, are factories now producing these things mm -hmm. using acrylic. Oh, yes. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Change. Well, acrylic became available and was uh, very popular because it was inexpensive and in really, really bright colors. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not surprising to see it. Okay, that belt there. This is an interesting story that I just read in the um, Lily De Jong. No, oh. oh yeah, we want to talk I'll about show that to Holly. Huh? Those, yeah, the, uh, Annie has this nice postcard of the guys from Chichi. We'll send it around. What, oh, can we see how the headdress is yeah. done in there, yeah. building? Yeah. Okay, that's how you do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This one is an interesting uh, story of fashion, let's say. Uh, I read in the um, Lily Dijon Osborne, who is, that's a really good reference book, got a lot of good information about Guatemala and El Salvador, and a little bit up into Chiapas, you know, the Mayan areas. Anyway, the Spanish apparently conscripted a bunch of guys from Oaxaca 
to come help them do the conquest in Guatemala. It's harder to do a conquest in Guatemala because people are out of reach up yeah, in the yeah, hills, yeah. you know. And also the people up by Mexico City, when they went and conquered Tenochtitlan, mm -hmm. some of those tribes from the eastern seaboard where, yeah. they, where they... Yeah. Uh, this was a group of soldiers from a Oaxaca area that brought this belt mm -hmm. concept with them. And I want especially to point out the dancer with the feather headdress. Can mm -hmm. you see him there? I, I, this is one of our recent um, acquisitions from the donation from Victoria Danzig and Dr. Alan Nahum that inspired this whole event to happen, the gallery and the program. And I looked at that belt and said, no, 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 this is Oaxaca. <laughs> and then fortunately, I happened to read in the um, in the Osborne book, would you grab that book that's on the corner, the Osborne, the big one? Yeah, the way on the far corner. That one, Barbara's got it. That one, Barbara. Yeah, <clears throat> this is the book. It's in our library. Yeah. Lily Dijon Osborne, Living in Guatemala, did her first book in 1935. This one came out in 1965. It's the latest hottest deal she's long gone now and some of her collection is in mills college but anyway she's got the whole story about these these guys from guatemala that ended up living it guys from oaxaca ended up living in guatemala because they came as soldiers and then they would import these belts once a year and so they're the belts are only typical to the town of mixco Mishko, M-I-X-C-O, and they're wool, and they're typically Oaxaca, and it just goes to show you mm -hmm. that's um, there that things are not necessarily static. Yeah. There are influences. Mm -hmm. Let's have the Toro Nikapan, mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh, Toro Santos bags. All three of those bags. Well, yeah. When I was there, for the late eighties, in the market in Chichi. There mm -hmm. were people who were doing repro re museum quality repros for silk, the old style silk with heels and things that, that were absolutely gorgeous. And even in Guatemala, were outrageously expensive. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But they were they looked just like the, yeah. the really old and gorgeous ones. I think that's great, and that's what yeah. Neil de Calanalpa is doing in the Center for Traditional yeah. Textos yeah. in uh, Cusco, Peru. Oh is researching all the museum pieces and reintroducing techniques that have been lost. Yeah. And I think it's great. I think uh, I think this is great for $2.75 from the thrift shop, but it hurts my heart because it's some woman's wheat peel. Okay. Yeah. It's been chopped up uh, and turned into a bag. It actually looks like a bag that would have been used there. So I'm going to justify this by saying that the wheat peel was had gotten too worn and and in order to continue to use it, it got turned into a bag. So, Lolly, John yeah. wrote bags. I bought this from Albertina. Yeah. And I don't know if she wove no, that she did the not. bag or it's left over no. with you. That's a project bag that uh, was probably done by one of the development groups. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like. It looks like it uses skirt fabric. It's not chopping up somebody's wheat peel. So uh, okay, more Kelly. power to it. Sure, why not? Stuff is not being passed down in this area. Make sure oh. things get all the way around. Well, we send Definitely. Elaine's purse that way. <laughs> so this is a well-worn bag from Toto Santos. How do I know? It says <laughs> <"Hey, what's going?" laughs> Same. And I believe it's crochet. Some of the rest of you may be crocheters and can tell me if that's the case. Here's a nice pristine bag. I believe this is also from Toto Santos. We'll go that way with that one. No, I'm going to send some belts around. These belts are made in Toto Santos. They are 
actually probably, oh no, they're discontinuous. No, they're continuous. They're continuous supplementary west brocade, meaning the color runs all the way from one side to the other, instead of like in the wheat fields where the color is localized and not all the way across. And uh, they're warp based and all the brocading is done on only one surface. There's it's kind of all the way around. You know, I'm not sure about that, Mari, because these are done for sale throughout Guatemala. These are, they are used by the people in Totonicapan, and they're also used in many of the other villages. They're traded around. Totonicapan and Huehuetenango and Quetzaltenango do a lot of things that are sold throughout Guatemala and used by people who live there. Here's another one, that one can go that way. And then another thing that happens in Totonicapan are these tapestry woven belts. Now these are done, I can tell you, on a funny little bitty loom that's a, a two heddle deal. It it's only takes up about this much space, sits on the table and gives you the basic shed, uh, you know, every other thread up or every other thread down. And these are hand tapestry woven. Wow. And these are head wraps. And where these are done, these things end up like this. Oh, and, and, adding kind of sticking up <laughs> in the front and this is all wrapped in your hair and around and around and around but there it's it's the only i'm going to go out on a limb it's the only tapestry weaving that i know of that's going on in guatemala i could be wrong about that but these are hair ribbons Here's another one. These are designed to go in your hair, roundy, roundy, round, and hang they're, down. They're braids. Their hair. Yeah. And they're all made in Todo Nicapan. And what did you, I'm sorry if I missed it. Did you say there's, what's, yeah. what do you yeah. design as tapestry oh, versus? Oh, good point. <laughs> tapestry <laughs> is a discontinuous weft technique, but it's weft based and it totally covers up the warp. So gotcha. all of the pattern making is in how you put the wefts in. Got it. Okay. So it's like the wheat peels with mm -hmm. the discontinuous weft, only there's no ground fabric. Oh. <laughs> there's just warp under there. Okay. If you pull that out, you're just going to have loose threads right. later on. Okay. Yeah. And then let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. Well, I bought this in Antigua. Just so lovely. Oh my gosh. Clearly. Clearly made. Rumors. Uh, rumors. <laughs> uh, and uh, if anyone knows what village this might be from, uh, Annie has something very similar, I think, in, up in the front of the house. Well, maybe. Similar pattern. <laughs> Again, it's a supplementary discontinuous weft. And it's a head. It's just solid red on the back. And it's got this nice uh, strap to keep it. A lot of times, so they'll wouldn't it have been wrapped on the thing that it's wrapped on, or would that have been wrapped around the it's, it's a band wrapped okay. around something. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. But you, did you buy it that way? Or I bought it this way, like and I knew I never <laughs> could recreate <laughs> it. So I left <laughs> <laughs> it. Because then you set your basket. Um, yeah, that either way. Except, except for it's not high enough on the front. So I'm wondering whether. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful job of brocade. I wish we knew if anybody knows. They do really cool. And I saved what I consider the best for last. Um, this is from the hot area, Koban. Um, and it's a very open weave with embroidered uh, sleeve and neck. Mm -hmm. And um, I want you to look really closely at the white cloth. Again, it's the supplementary. Can you see it when I hold this? Yeah. 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 
See how see-through it is? Yeah. Uh -huh. This one is a wheat peel panel, maybe. And um, it's done in a technique that's called lino. The, these really open areas here are a twisted warp weed. And then it's got the, is this, yes, discontinuous, let me check. Yes, discontinuous supplementary weft weed, I can tell, because there's little ends hanging out in the back, making the little peoples and the little birds and things. I have here a linen tester. And if you hold this on your hand or put it on the table and put the linen tester right on top, you can look in there and see the twisted warps and uh, the discontinuous web. This piece that's hanging on the bookshelf is a wedding we peel from Koban. Koban is in the east. It's much lower and it's very warm there. Anybody been to Koban? Can yeah. Talk about Koban. Sure. Okay. Yeah. This is real typical from Koban. Koban's in Uche. Yes, okay. I believe it is. Or Alta Verapaz. Alta Verapaz. Uche is so remote. Yeah. So it's like a two hour trip. Neva and Kosal and Koban. Uh -huh. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, yeah, I wanted to talk about Dumbly Talk. Actually, Annie, why don't you talk about Dumbly Talk? This is an American uh, style, you know, European style. There's a, a theater near you. This <laughs> is uh, an uh, a European style skirt with a uh, waistband. They don't bother with the waistbands. They just make a big tube, climb inside, gather it all up, put a belt around it, like Nancy was showing you. But I wanted you to see this cloth. Annie's got some very good examples of this cloth. It's a double ecot. So remember that, um, Vince, would you hold that oh, yeah, again no. to remind us? The yarn that's tied and dyed before it's woven. So it's tied and dyed for the warp stripes this way. And then it's also tied and dyed for the yarns that are going across. And in Guatemala, uniquely, they pay no attention to trying to match up the design. It's just whatever happens mm. as it goes across. Mm. Yes. And like I said, Annie's got some absolutely spectacular pieces for sale in the kitchen. <laughs> Our little Guatemalan uh, uh, market in the kitchen. Oh, this piece is from Toto Santos. They're typically this red and white, and typically this lightning design, and the, typically this rickrack up at the top. Molly, can you hold it? Oh, sorry. Oh, Toto Santos. This is going to be the quick show of the Zoom. <laughs> These two, email passes around. These two are from San Pedro Sacatepecas, which is very close to Guatemala City. There's a really interesting story. Who's got the Peterson book? Ah, would you show that? Hold this up. This is my absolutely favorite book. Carmen Peterson, she lived in Guatemala until she died. You want me to show the book? Yeah, show the book. She did watercolors of each of the villages. Well, almost all the villages. Now flap the pages, do a little Vanna White thing there. <laughs> she, she did uh, watercolors of a, a lot of the villages and they are absolutely accurate but they're very specific to their time period which was middle 60s early 70s but they relate to a lot of the things that we have which were collected in the 70s 80s 90s we were all down there um, Annie's also got on a Toto Santos piece, and and it's a little different by uh, the color in the um, edges, but it's still got this rickrack and the lightning designing thing. 
So San Pedro is outside of Guatemala City, and I was talking about Carmen Peterson because in there she talks about the fact that her the, the guy that took care of her house went home to San Pedro, you know, whenever he had his days off. And she visited him there. And he went totally village whenever he was at home. And all the women in that village, despite their proximity to the main city, Guatemala City, still did everything traditional, wore their traditional clothes, lived in traditional houses. So San Pedro, according to Carmen Peterson, is a weaving town for villages all around. So one of these is from Nahuil, which is also close by. And uh, one of them is from San Pe I think this is the Nahuil with the this treatment down the center. Can you see that? It's different than this. And also uh, the, the um, San Pedro's have this unique green treatment to the um, show to the neck area. Did you say that was San Pedro Lavazin? No, you're uh, stand up, Kathleen, at, and twirl around a little bit and, and step over here in front of the Zoomers. You have a moon on your deck. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know if it's a moon, but yeah, that's typical. This is Hilotepec, and the name Hilotepec is Pachacel, um, I hope for um, corn town with corn on the hillside. <laughs> and it's got a San somebody or other in front of it. And that's the way most of the villages are. It's a Saint somebody and then a, a, a local word, Hilotepec. So, so what is and the word in now the Canada? Hilotepec, J-I-L-O-T-E-P-Q-U-E, Hilotepec or so again see it's the brocade we have one of these in the gallery right now that was a gift from uh, victoria Dante. thank you thank you <laughs> let's see what else we got do you know where yours is from hilding no i don't know looks for Haka. um i would I'm not so sure. I'm not. I'm not sure. Yeah, and well, I, I would start pounding the books, and I would start with Carmen Peterson, and go from there. And Jill, can you stand up, honey? Or can people see Jill? What a beautiful. Pretty woman. fabulous. Yeah. That. And let's look on the inside. Oh, it's a brocade. But I think it's from San Antonio August Calientes. Huh. Judging from the floral and uh, these two uh, lines here, uh, the sun image and uh, what I call lightning. I don't know what they call it. That's a beauty. Well, is the neck just cut out after? I suspect that somebody yeah. made it a little bigger so they could get their head for their Yeah. Like what about if it's just around the neck? Did they uh -huh. cut it? And finish it? Yeah. 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 Oh, it's that piece that you've got. Yeah. Well, can I ask a question? Yeah. Some of these we built to have, uh, you know, like a slit and then a stone, and then some of them are like open. this where they're open. Yeah. For that. It's, a, it's a village preference. And um, I don't know your name. Me? Yeah. Jane. Jane was talking about, uh, uh, reminded me that these ones that are open on the sides, they sort of gather and fold them and get their skirt around them and cinch them up with a nice belt. So, you know, it's a little open at the arm, but it's not, you're not flapping around in the breeze. Yeah. yeah. And those San Pedro ones, the um, panels are usually going the opposite direction. They go long wise. So they're quite wide and uh, seamed along the top. And uh, this is, one mm -hmm. to uh, talk about uh, the oh, neck finishes. Oh, am I looking at the back? Are they both? So this Sorry. one is, Whoa. Um, where's Hildy? You were wearing one of these the other day for Africa Day. Yeah. So so a lot, huh? 
I don't know where these are from. They're beautiful. And the, here's the net ready to go. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah. But this is how it, it's done, you know, that it's woven in these huge panels and then the neck is cut into it. And this one's got the natural brown cotton in it. I yep. think that one's been yeah. around. Do you know where yours is from, Elaine? No, I don't. And uh, I could I be Santa Maria. I thought so a lot from what I was She had me book. sew the arms and oh, hem it for no. her. And then you I ended up with it. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's mine. <laughs> yeah. I think maybe Santa Maria, although it's the wrong colors, but it's Santa Maria has a tendency to uh, be totally covered with diamonds. Mm. And uh, no, no, that's that's the way it came. So yeah. it's the it's the Cofferdia of Solana. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Now you know. So th this piece that stand up and do it again, Nancy. Okay. <laughs> See what I mean? You just hit the books and look at the picture. So this was a try to remember. <laughs> whoever was built weaving this style by a merchant, you know, who would mm -hmm. show things in New York and whatnot. But um, I got it in Toto Santo. No, in uh, yeah, Toto Santo Baja. Um, but it's a cofredia we peel that hasn't been cut and sewn yet. Mm -hmm. From Solo La. Pardon? I think, I think it was, you know, uh, ordered to be for oh, yeah. sale of a, of, a, of a really high quality weaver who made it new with the direction of the of the person who wanted it. And these are all applique on applique and stitched on. Mm. So I think what they did here was took the weep peel design and made it into a blanket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. With it no just, intention of cutting. Right. No intention right. of cutting it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. I mean, it's a beauty. Do you know where yours is from? No. But um, would you stand up and do the twirl? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I know um, <clears throat> also like the inside. I think it might it might be possible. Yeah, it's darker. But can I look inside? Yeah. yeah, this is all hand embroidered. So a lot of those are birds and flowers are somewhere around Lake Hockey Pond. Yeah. And or their Kachakel. Like this one from Potsun. Yeah, the ones from I, I don't know. Yeah, but the ones from Potsun always have this. Again, it's about putting your head through the sun. So it's a radiating design that is uh, stitched, hand stitched onto the neck of there. This little guy, I finally found a picture, is uh, from one of the lake towns. It's um, San Juan La Laguna. It's a little girl's outfit, and it's also stitched. This one is from Santiago Atitlan, absolutely distinctive. Next to the uh, San Juan Sacatepecas, these are probably the most recognizable because they're almost always purple or maroon or an occasional black or blue striped fabric and then elaborately hand embroidered. Wally, do you know what the dye is for the purple? Um, I wish I had that sock at Topekas now. Um, it's all aniline dyes at this point. Um, although I think there are design, there are development groups that are trying to reintroduce natural dyes, uh -huh. but natural dyes take a lot of effort and don't necessarily reveal wonderful bright colors like this. <laughs> and so, yeah. So, it, um, well, we have another. Um, 
Stand, please. <laughs> you know where? I don't. Oh, I, oh. I'm just thinking. I don't want to say where I thought because I feel like I'll be wrong. Where's your bag? Oh, yeah, say what you like, think. And we'll, well, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Well, this you're going to hate because it's cut up. Yeah, it's cut up. Don't come over. 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 The neck edges. That's why I was confused. Yes. But there's Chichi, no moon. But it's not Chichi. So it's not Chichi. It's from Annie's sister in law. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, oh, But who knows? Yeah, who knows? Hit the books. <laughs> Keep looking. <Yeah. laughs> who did I miss? Sonia, you're not dressed except for your scarf. Can we talk about your scarf? Right. I was dressed. Oh, lovely little bitty ecots, and their weft direction. I think. Huh. No, it could, they could be warped. They're, it's got little fringes on both sides, so it's anybody's bet whether they're weft based or warp based. I'm actually trying to this for the moment. Oh, that's skirt fabric that's been over dyed. Uh huh. Oh, be Here's a lovely shawl, a nice old one with lots of warp ecot. Like that, those. The quality of that is so much better than yes. the warp one. Yes. Yeah. And that that probably dates this to the 70s, I would guess, maybe earlier 60s. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, it's these that we saw. Let's send the two uh, ECOPs around the other one. Yeah, I will not. This one's from San Antonio Polapa. Uh -huh. This the village south and east of Santa Catarina. Very uh, similar, very um, typical of around the lake. We're running out of time. Omalapa. No, that's a woman's field. Have a look at this one. Get up. We're wrapping it up now. This is actually a skirt piece. This is a tube. Whoa. Yes. So some short person <laughs> had to do a whole lot of gathering up and belting wow. Wow. to keep this skirt on. Uh -huh. Cool. But this is so typical of the 60s and 70s oh, color ways. With a nice e top. It's woven on a travel loom, probably in Toto Nikapan, maybe oh, in, in, um, um, maybe in Salkaha. You're hung up on the. It's huge. I wonder if they were visited by the Scots. <laughs> well, they, certainly they, not. They have the whole thing about lying on the ground in order to hold their kilt. Uh -huh. These you these you step into, and then you gather them all uh, up. And the the colors get so sixties and seventies. You know, it's like, just perfect. When you take it, or, yeah. Uh, yeah. So look, we made it. Twelve o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well done. Thank you, all. Annie's got a nice picture book here, and she's going to do some talking here. It's sitting in front. Of the top, okay. I'm not going to take too long, but um, uh, briefly, I don't know anything hardly about we, but when we went to visit uh, my sister-in-law, Mari. And her husband, Romeo, had a shop in Fort Bragg for a long time called Guatemala for now. Um, and one of her friends is uh, Maria Cano, uh, Cano Cano from Toto Nicapan, who is a weaver. And um, we went, Sonia and I have both visited her. And I went and it was Nancy New, some of you may know, who we went up and visited. And um, she had like piles of corte uh, that they have w woven. And uh, she took us to see her friend Laura, who was in the process of weaving, and had a bicycle wheel where they were winding the uh, the yarn. And this is pictures of the 
ECOT. 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 And then uh, they spun it, they undid all the little threads and then they spun it onto bobbins. And uh, oh, it's hard to see. I'll pass it. You know, oh. you can look at it. Um, and this here, they're taking off the, all the little threads. And then um, it was woven on a bigger loom, not a back strap. A treadle loom. Um, and here's Laura. So there's some examples of her, a few muestras that she did a little samples in there. And then the um, uh, corte. corte is all from Toto, from uh, Theodora and Laura. Well, Theodora. So, uh...